yes, there we go. We, the old awkward intro music here on Backchat. Uh, we don't like giving big introductions, although I will introduce this man because he's been a big part of the Backchat family for quite a long time, even longer than you, Dan. Uh, the man sitting in front of us right now, Hamish Brayshaw, one-game veteran of the West Coast Eagles. That's right, drafted with pick 68, 2017, um, was in, out. He's been and seen and done a lot. Uh, he's a he's an interstater, moved here to Western Australia. We're going to speak to him about that. Um, he's been on the list. He's been off the list. He's been rookie. He's been he's been a senior listed player. He's played waffle. He's coached. He's pretty much done it all. Hamish Brayshaw, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. What an intro! Uh, yeah. it, was, it was quite good. It was probably <laughs> the best I've ever given. <laughs> yeah. For a bloke who's played one game and wasn't much good, I'll take it. You know, oh, a bit more, of a resume. You've played a yeah. lot more than Dan has. You played yeah, you get that. Has. Yep. Um, <laughs> and after Bowie lost on the weekend, there's still the best win percentage in the AFL. 1-1, one, one, 100%. Thank you very Is much. Is that a fact? Are you the only person no, to hold that? No, there's plenty that have had one but for win, but no one never can get lost. better that's than right. that. And I I've never lost. That. So that's something that I hold very dear to my heart. I love that. Now, before we get too stuck into it, we ask the same question to every guest yep. first up. Mm-hmm. We want to know your greatest <laughs> sporting achievement. Now, okay, you were drafted by West Coast. Good on you. You've done some great things in the football world. Good on you. We Who don't really it? care. Yeah. We want to know your greatest sporting achievement not yeah, I've got it. on the football. <laughs> He's listened before. <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 16th birthday. Great. Mm. Uh, I was in year nine at the time playing – actually, year 10 at the time playing cricket. So I'd been dropped from the 10 A's and I was playing 10 B's on my birthday <laughs> for the first time ever playing B-grade cricket at school and it was not very good. So I've come out with bowling first. I've taken five. Leg spin at the time, just bowling absolute areas, wow. five wickets. Nearly took a hat-trick, one bold, next one LBW, third one comes in, it's hit his pads off, celebrated, nah, not out, next ball, skittled him, so three in the over. <laughs> Hasn't appealed, just celebrated. <laughs> so I've taken five, <laughs> taken five in the innings, it's a 50 over game, so 50 overs done, come out to bat, just absolutely striping this ball, hit 24 <laughs> off the over off this one kid who was bowling absolute <laughs> pies, and then two overs later, don't say it, not sure if I can say this, but I'm saying it anyway. Yeah, you can say it. So the kid, nine beats, ten beats, to give you the standard of cricket, and it very inclusive over there in uh, for the Halebury uh, ten beats, a kid playing for the other team, I think, not sure what his disability was, right. but he had something wrong with his right hand whereby it was stuck in this position almost permanently. Okay. And he bowled left-handed and bowled okay. I hit him for a couple. And then... Uh, <laughs> That's harsh. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Come I remember <laughs> he was fielding it mid-on, and that is to my left, so as I scoop, he is fielding there and I've just popped one up to him thinking, yeah, I'm good here. I've run, stuck in the mitt. That's it right yes. there. So good. I've, yes. Yes. Good. Looked at him. Game respect, game mate. I've walked off. But anyway, Pfeiffer and 35 as uh, as my greatest and, off-field sporting And, and very good. And, and humbled. En- and ended <laughs> like it should have been. Yes. Absolutely humbled. Who was it against? Uh, I think it might have been against Kerry. Jeez. Humbled in the 10 oh, Bs. I feel like Hamish knew... A lot of details around that story. Yeah. <laughs> he's told replayed it a few the, times. He's yeah. replayed that. Um, how many How many did you get hit for? Uh, I didn't get hit for many. Five for 11 off five overs. That's pretty good figures yeah. for was anyone it, who was knows. Was it in a final or just regular nah, season? Regular, yeah. no, 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 no. Regular okay. season, 10 he's days. Late. He wants to tell you something. Oh, oh yeah, No, okay. I just ha- I mean, I, I did bowl Pfeiffer in a grand final. Uh, five for 16. Um, was on a hat-trick ball, but... Bold the uh, tail out, so mm, didn't get a yeah. chance. Five for that. sixteen, five for eleven. Yeah, <laughs> much, for a final, much for a much. Did you win? You Did you yeah, win? yeah, we won. Of course, we won. You, of course yeah. you won. You took your five <laughs> wickets. <laughs> 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 you can't take five wickets and not win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, man. actually, Did you guys lose that. Yeah, the yeah. trophy's right there. Actually, Hamish. yeah, that's the ball. <laughs> if you're wondering, yeah, nice. I didn't get the ball. I don't think they do that in the bees. Now, okay, as we mentioned, right? Okay, so pick sixty-eight and twenty seventeen, very late, diamond in the rough type areas, wasn't it? Um, so you, you you live in Victoria. Uh, you're happy you get drafted to Western Australia. It's going to be a bit of a journey of Hamish Brayshaw, if you don't mind. Of course, you understand that tremendous journey. Is, is that yeah correct? Is that uh, happiness? What, how do you feel when you get drafted to WA? Yeah, well, I've got um, a lot of family over here, so that helped. Uh, Andrew, I remember the night he was over there because he was a much better player than I was. He was <laughs> going to go top ten, so he went over to the draft as you do. He went two, so we had a draft party for me. Uh, not for me, sorry, for him and one of our mates, Charlie Constable, who went to Geelong that same night. Yes. He was going to go pretty high. I think he went 30, 33 or something. So we, I was around at his place watching, celebrating Andrew, half and maybe an hour later celebrating Charlie, and then everybody, all of his mates came round to the house because your best mates got drafted, so we've had a lot of people come over celebrating Charlie, celebrating Andrew, they're all friends. 
And then 30 minutes into the celebrations, it dawns on everyone that I'm still sitting there awkwardly, like, undrafted, <clears throat> thinking, oh, geez, maybe I'm a chance, maybe I'm not. And then 68 comes around, I get drafted, it goes, the house goes bananas. Um, Andrew's straight on the phone, we're going on the plane together, all the rest of it. But, yeah, family over here. Brayshaw family, well set up in WA, well, coming over with my little brother. It was well, awesome. Was it a – I mean, it's a late pickup. Like, was it a real possibility that you don't get picked up? Well, and it's one of the most awkward draft parties of all time. Been, well, it wasn't my draft party, so it was for my for my mates, but I was there. Anyway, West Coast had called me the week before saying, we will, we will definitely rookie you at a minimum, but there's a chance if some picks don't go our way early, we might pick you in the national. So – I'm sitting there, and at this point, the rookie. It used to be like three weeks after, yeah, the rookie draft. But it, it, nowadays, it's like it's the next day. So I was thinking it's going to be on the weekend. I might get drafted on the weekend, but I'm a chance tonight. So I was in there with a hope, and then yeah, it happened, and it was great. But it wouldn't have been. It would have been oh, horribly awkward if I was just sort of sitting there like, yeah, <laughs> result. Well done, Andrew. But yeah, it ended up being. End up going the right way. So is everyone just sort of you know out there having you know, partying, and you're just sitting by on the couch by yourself, still watching the TV? Is that yeah, the sort of situation? That's exactly what happened. So Charlie, I think went mid thirty. So I celebrated with him until about forty five, right? And then I sat back down on the couch, and so I was there with my brother Angus and all of my fam- all of his Charlie's family and his friends who were Andrew's friends who were also my friends because we're all pretty similar age. And so celebrated with them for about 30 minutes and then it was straight back on the couch. They all kept celebrating for another 30 minutes until they realised that I hadn't moved in about an hour. <laughs> and everyone was just, oh, right, oh, here we go and settle it in. Uh, Charlie, I've got an early one for you to look up here. Has there ever been two brothers that have been playing for West Coast and Fremantle at the same time? Because one of you gets drafted to Fremantle, mm-hmm. one of you gets drafted to West Coast. Yep. Does a rivalry develop? Like, d- d- does it, or is it just, you know, your brothers and, uh, yeah, we play for different teams, but we're always going to be best mate. Or is there West Coast Frio early on? Like, well, because because in this town, that's what it is. It is what it is. Uh, we only played each other once in, like, a scratch match. So there was Great. the JLT game. So our, we have one sanctioned practice match against Frio, and then the JLT game, which it was at the time. I should mention Hamish Brayshaw, brother of <laughs> Andrew Brayshaw, yep. who plays for Fremantle, brother of... Angus Brayshaw that plays for Melbourne, brother of Will Brayshaw who yep. does not play football. No, he doesn't play football in the Army East. Just I bet people listening maybe just going, "Who is this guy talking about Who's all this?" <laughs> Angus and Andrew, and <laughs> yeah. but yeah, both so brothers are the rivalry good. does it develop? So it sort of. De- oh, that's my phone. That's Never okay. mind, we'll forget about it. Um, yeah. the, it sort of developed. So the JLT game for the JLT. So between sanctioned pracky match and JLT game, there was like three weeks, and so they played one off like a. An, unsche- an unscheduled practice match. Scratchy. Scratchy. Just for sort of anyone who needed to run and then for your battlers. The plebs. The, so, <laughs> mate. Anyway. <laughs> and, yeah, and Andrew. <coughs> and Andrew. Yeah, but I remember playing that game and I only came on for one quarter. So I came on for the last quarter and had like seven or eight in a quarter. Felt real good. In hindsight, everyone else was knackered because it was like 40 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> but I remember lining up on him at like two stoppages and hitting him across the chest. He hit me once. And so like out there, the rivalry was fierce. That's good. But off the field, he was always a lot better than I was and I was never really a chance to be playing against. So when it came derby time, I was never any any contention. So it was for one quarter of one game, I very fierce. That. But off the field, I was like, you know, all, all happy for you to play well. But, you know, that was where the sort of rivalry That's ended. Good. What about at home? Playing sports, are you getting into each other pretty fiercely or is it um, looking after one another? No, nah, it was very fierce growing up. So there was four boys between, they we're all sort of four, maybe five years between Will and Andrew. So the youngest to oldest is about five years. <coughs> and it, for the most part, until we all developed, it was very much Will was stronger than Angus, who was stronger than me, who was stronger than Andrew. And it just went down the line like that. So if Will or Angus would beat me up, I'd want to feel good about myself, so I'd go and beat Andrew up. <laughs> Poor and Andrew. there was just nothing that he could do about it except, you know, go and cry to mum. And you know, that was his out. But mum, I was in the unfortunate position that I wasn't the oldest and I wasn't the youngest. So the youngest went to mum or dad and was like you know, crying and got away with it. Whereas, and Angus was much better at sport than me as a young kid. So he was always a bit of the golden child. And then Will was the oldest. So I was just, in four, you don't have a middle child, but that was me. So I was just getting hammered by Will and Angus all the time. And whenever I'd try and take it out on Andrew, he would cry to mum. So in terms of physical stuff, that was that. But then sport, we were mucking around out the backyard all the time. 
we used to, if it was ever an argument in the house about anything, mum would just kick us out the back and say, lock the door and say, right, I sort it out, I'll see you in 20 minutes. And then we'd all be muddy and dirty and dad would spray us down with a hose. So it was <laughs> very much a competitive household. I like that. Segway into your dad, Mark. Yep. Played 32 games for North Melbourne. Yes, he did. Do you, do you have any recollection of... Those times? So did you spend any time at the footy club or? Nah, so he was well before my time. He was 90, I think he got drafted in 89 and played for four years and then finished his footy career and had kids. So yeah. he played at Claremont before that and a little bit after, but I was three or four years after he stopped playing footy. But Do, um, Does he try to teach you three boys that played and Will as well? <coughs> thing or two but this is how dad used to do it he did a little bit he was always uh, he knew he was a bit of a battler a lot better a bit better than me but like he always knew that he gave us a couple of tips here and there but um yeah he was he didn't try and impart too much of his own game on us just sort of play your own game and this is what if, if we did something dumb like if we were just going out kick chasing he would let us know but um no he was always pretty good with that yeah, so um you move away at a pretty young age obviously to get over to to Mel, well, to WA to play, but you're you've been at home as well. You're a mature age draft pick. Yep. How old were you when you drafted? <coughs> Nineteen when I was drafted. So do you reckon that helped? Hindered? Do you look at other guys that are getting picked up at seventeen years old and think that's too young? Like, what's your thoughts on all of that? Like you personally, and then other people. Yeah, I think for me personally, in my eighteenth year, I broke my foot and didn't play a whole lot of consistent football. So, got. Miss, missed my drafting when I was 18. People just sort of wanted to see where my foot would go. <coughs> Ended up being okay. Played Tack Cup for the first four rounds, which is the Colts equivalent in WA. Played pretty well. And then progressed and played VFL for the back half of the year. I was playing regularly at a VFL ga- level, which was good for my age, and was playing reasonable football. Um, <coughs> but in the first four Tack Cup games, I was playing against kids that were going to get drafted top 20, you know, first rounders. And yes. I was playing much better than they were because I was a stronger and more developed player. So looking back at it, if I had my time again, I would have preferred to have stuck it out and played a full year of TAC Cup. Even though I did get the development from playing VFL, <coughs> I wasn't able to sort of put my hand up and say, hey, look at me, I'm a lot better than the kids that you're thinking about drafting at this age. You know, yeah. I, Because of my development, they'd given them time, they were a lot better than I was. But I probably missed a chance to have a bit more stability and, and more sort of concreteness in my ability to be drafted, sort of, if that makes sense. But um, in terms of other players, I think you get guys that come in at 18 and are ready to go, like Nick Dacos is a star. He's mm. no need to develop him any more than he already is. But then you get guys who come in and take three or four years to develop, whereas I think if you give them time at a waffle system or a VFL system, they're pretty much ready to go. Like Connor West at West Coast now, he wasn't ready when he was 18. <coughs> Had three years to play waffle footy developed into a player and now he's good to go whereas a lot of guys fizzle out in three or four years at AFL because they get picked up at 18 so I think there should be a bit more weight given to mature age players around that 21 20 age give them a couple of years to develop and then go for it agreed uh Greg Clark you'll see him continue to grow for West Coast fans out there and he'll get better and better he's a 24 year old right so been applying his trade in in the in the waffle so staying on your family and this is something that you you bought you know continued on here in wa but the hundred one hundred, so i think it's worth touching on (laughs) off the start and and correct me if i'm wrong do you know what i'm talking about here dan no good i'm waiting for you to explain so uh, you tell what 100 100 is and correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure the Fremantle dockers half the team was doing it this year yeah, i feel like i saw something on yeah. social media there's a few of them down there. so what's a 100 100s so 100 100s is 100 100 meter runs so 100 meter sprints is a loose term because we're not sprinting but um about i reckon we've been doing it for nearly 10 years now so angus when he was trying to get drafted wanted to do um Sorry, this is a bit burpy, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good beer, but uh, that's how beer goes Great sometimes. Great beer, yeah, you get that. Uh, you can try the whippersnapper as well. Yeah, shelter, I'll, yep, I'll lean away next time. Uh, so <laughs> Angus was trying to get drafted and Dad had been there and done that and I remember him saying that a lot of the times to separate the good from the great players, it's what you do when no one's looking or what you're doing off the field, that sort of cliche. And Angus then said, what was the hardest thing you ever had to do as a player? I think Dennis Pagan made North do one day. They had this massive... They got belted one day and it was like, right, everyone in on the Sunday, we're doing 100 hundreds. <laughs> and if no one, if you don't make the time, you just add another one on the end. So What's the time? <clears throat> so the time for them, I think, was a minute. But granted, this was the day after the game, so they would have been <laughs> a bit sore. <laughs> anyway, 
that became righto. Well, let's do 100 hundreds. The hardest thing my dad's ever done. Let's do that. When's some? When's a time that no one is going to be going and running or doing anything? And we thought righto, Christmas morning. So not only is no one else really doing anything, but you set yourself up to have a, a ball tear of a day. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so that 100 hundreds was born from that. And it started off just the four of us and a couple of mates. And on last last Christmas, <laughs> we had myself, my girlfriend, her sister, her brother, my older brother, Will, and a bunch of his army mates. And then Andrew, Caleb Sarong, Lloyd Meek, uh, Bro- Will Brody, Steph Giro, all these Freo guys. And like half of Peel's list came down and did it with them. <laughs> there was about, I got a photo on my Instagram. There's about 25 guys that came down and did Brilliant. it this morning. <laughs> it was unreal. And because... Lex was a reporter. She just – Channel 9 came down and did it at the time. And so it became a big thing. But, yeah, it started from what's the hardest thing you've ever had to do and when's something that – no, when's a time that no one's ever doing anything. So 100, 100. This is a proper thing, Dan. So uh, the Christmas <coughs> break for AFL players, you get three weeks, uh, two weeks, sometimes three weeks of being away from the club. You get, you know, guys that are interstate go back home for their families or whatever it is. But it's not really a break. You need to stay fit. You need to come back. You usually have a 2K time trial before you leave. And one bef- when you come back. <laughs> the worst. The, the, the what's worst. the worst? When you leave or when you come back? Oh, I think coming back. The one when you come back delivers, just doing it's fine. It's a 2K time trial. But the anxiety oh, uh, that is involved goodness, over that three week period is enormous. But you would have got better at it. And sorry to cut you off. You would have got Please. much better at it than me because I was still in my first, I was only there for three years. So every time I did a 2K, it was like, I have to give it abs- absolutely everything here. Yeah. So the pre Christmas 2K, I've killed myself to try and get there, knowing, not knowing that. They don't care about that one. They care about what it's like when you come back. So yeah, 11, 13 yeah. years in the system. Do you understand? Very good. Yeah, yeah. The one you when you leave. Yeah, just cruise through, get 650 or whatever, and then 640, all you need is six, one second better. So no cruising, but you just got to yeah. just to know. Maybe two seconds a lap. Yeah, maybe three exactly. seconds. Not noticeable, but, but you enough know. to know inside, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And if you have a couple more beers over Christmas, you don't do the 100 hundreds. Yeah, whereas me, yes. I was going balls to the wall every time. So are guys Still prepping like. for that, or is that meant to be your first crack at a 2K? Like a People training. Right, try, you have to train over Christmas and yep. not necessarily prepping for the 2K time trial, but you know you have that there. And if you come out and do an absolute stinker, it, you, look, preseason training doesn't select you round one. It never has. And even if you go well, you don't get selected round one. I know more than anyone <laughs> else. It doesn't matter what you do. But if you have a if you have a poor one, you don't have to go well. You really don't have to set a PB. But just don't go badly. You come back yeah. and run badly. What have you been doing over your Christmas break? Yeah. Time to stop drinking. Time, time to yeah, stop eating this stuff. Yeah, no, 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 eating these types of food. Your skin folds are too much, and then they start. Oh, you've been to the meeting late. Oh, you don't give a shit. Oh, and then next minute, it's, it's July, <laughs> and it's contract time, and you're like, oh shit. And it starts going this. from skin folds every month to hang on a minute. We got to get you in every second week, or we got to get you in every week. We got to give you the diet plan. A bit more hand holding. Yeah. What, what, what's it like? Uh, you know, we've we've had some Premiership players on here. We've had some. You know, all Australians, common medalists. What, what's it like being on a list? A hot just JK? <laughs> all of them, just JK? <laughs> yeah. Tom Hawkins? Yeah. I'm oh. just saying, all Australian, gold, common medalist. And <laughs> Sorry, very good, player. very good, very yeah. good. Anyway, yeah, yeah, correct. had one guest. With that one guest and Hamish Brayshaw. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, 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 everyone yep. and Hamish Brayshaw. Uh, what's it like coming onto a list, a late draft pick, a very late draft pick, and having to absolutely fight tooth and nail for everything you ever get? It's a different perspective. It is. Yeah, it certainly is. And coming from my family and my brothers who Angus was picked three and Andrew was picked two, they had very much, and within a week of being at the club, had been given a two-year contract extension. And it, it was a different feel. Like, I remember my first year, I probably didn't get it. Like, I was mucking around a little bit and taking the piss. and Not taking the piss, but, like, just enjoying playing football and playing waffle. And it was a different thing. Being on an AFL list, come in, you know, that was your job. And... <clears throat> I'd just come from working at uh, a pizza place and playing and studying and playing footy, so I was loving the you know the downtime and just enjoying it, mucking around with the boys. So I probably didn't take it seriously enough until my second year, and then it was like, hang on a minute, I got drafted with ten guys, I think, in twenty seventeen, yeah. and all of the guys on the senior list had been given contract extensions in their first year, and I was the only one that hadn't, and I was like, well. I've only got a year left and I've got to do something. So I had to pull my finger out and, and try and actually apply myself a bit more. And I thought I was playing some pretty good waffle footy. But at that point, we still had Shuey, we had Yo, we had Dom Sheed, we had Jack Redden. I was ne- like, I was probably not going to get a look in the midfield unless someone really got hurt. And then 
I was like, righto, how am I going to go about this? Let's try forward. So I spoke. I remember speaking to Simo, like, can I try and play forward in Waffle? And he was at that point, yep, I think he'd shoved me aside a little bit. And I was, he's like, yeah, no worries. I had a go, real, for it, go for it, go buddy. for it, mate. Go, yeah, go, go champion. for it, champ. <coughs> and I had a pretty good back end of the Waffle year, which I thought, in hi- definitely in hindsight, got me another year on the, on the list. But I remember think, yeah, looking back at it, you probably took my first year for granted, had to fight like hell to get anywhere in my second year. I remember when I was... Did you ever go on a Cambodia trip? Yeah. The club take you to... Boys go to Cambodia at the end of the year for like a... Team building. Team building slash charitable right. trip where you go out into these rural communities in Cambodia and build these people houses that lift them off the floor great so they trip. don't get floods. Fantastic trip. Best thing I've ever done almost in my life yeah. with some great fellas. Anyway, <clears throat> I go there out of contract and I remember having my exit meeting and my exit meeting was, mate, we're not sure. We're 50-50 at the moment. Um, you know we, we've got to wait because this was before the Tim Kelly trade so it was like we're still we're, we're trying to get Tim Kelly we've got a couple of things on the go we can't commit to you yet I said that's fine can I still go to Cambodia <laughs> and they <laughs> said yeah no worries great so I went to Cambodia Good negotiating yeah, great you. went to Cambodia before the contract had been decided or not and I remember being on this sketchy WhatsApp call with my manager saying like mate they're you, delisted uh, <laughs> rookie and I'm just thinking oh, all I heard was delisted and then I was like oh my god <laughs> so I'm sitting in this hotel in the middle of Phnom Penh thinking like I'm just being delisted I'm done <laughs> and then get You've a booked he, your flight yeah, from Cambodia he's just hung up on me text me you've been delisted they're gonna re-rookie you you know sweet so I was like oh thank goodness anyway then got back and was like just I went to America the week I got back from Cambodia to do a running camp and like came back super fit was flying along in this preseason and I thought I'd put everything, put my best foot forward. COVID, no waffle, in hubs, playing scrimmages. About halfway through the year, there was like three, four mids got injured. And it was basically the last, me and Xavier O'Neill were the last two midfielders that it was going to be picked out of. And it was at that point, both of us out of contract. Like, you just, it was a, almost a joke. Whoever gets picked here, you're the one that they're going to progress with. The other one, pack your bags. And they went with Zave. And I just remember thinking, well, you know, I'm, I'm still going to try my best and have a bit of fun, but I know that my time here is done. So probably back to your original question. The first year uh, took for a little bit for granted in hindsight. Year, the year and a half that I was trying my best, I was giving it absolutely everything, fighting, always talking to Simo, trying to, hey, what can I do to get better? And absolutely had to scrap for every bit of attention that I ever got at the club. And then the back end six months were just a lot of fun with some good fellas. So it was a different experience than a lot of others, but fun. You, you, um, you, you, I think you speak about it similar to Ryan Davis, who's been on this podcast. You sound similar anyway, and I think my impressions were similar as well. First, get to the club. You're you're a mature age, so you've been a you've been you're not you're not a child when you come in. You mature. You can bond with the young, older guys, and you have got a bit of confidence. And I think when you come in, um, that confidence gets without knowing you, that confidence gets perceived as arrogance, maybe not yeah. arrogance, but ahead of yourself. Ahead, yeah. And you, and then in a footy club, that those sort of players get chopped down. But when you actually start to get to know players like this, like a Ryan Davis, like a Hamish Brazier, you actually realise that characters like you, with some confidence, you know, you, you turn into the guys that drive cultural things. So that you turn that into a strength, right? Is what you speak about. You went from from class clown to not really changing much, I don't think. I don't think you che- maybe just tweaked a few things, yeah. you know, little tweaks here and there, and you turn that into a real drive of culture. So that yeah. trip that you went on to Cambodia, yeah. you ran a, a survivor. survivor. Camp. Excellent. You ran a, yeah. a survivor for the entire boys. And we're talking proper Jeff Probst, like like props. Yeah. We're talking... Hands in the air. We're talking Hand, yeah. immunity symbols. We're mm-hmm. like, And that sort of stuff might sound normal, but... There's very few guys at footy clubs that do that sort of stuff. There's 80% of guys that are just there to either work hard or get delisted or do whatever they want. You know, they just go along with the road. But you're a leader in that sense. Yeah. yeah. Australian, uh, Cambodian survivor, big deal. That was awesome. So a little, for anyone who doesn't, a lot of people don't know. (laughs) But we went over there and it was like, right, we've got a bit of time to kill on the flight. So we flew over to Singapore first and Singapore to Cambodia. And there was like a nine-hour delay or something in Singapore that we were just sitting around this um, in the airport lounge eating so many dumplings. They were so good over there. <laughs> anyway, I'm smashing these dumplings. I'm like, right, what can we do to fill the time? 
And it was right around the time Abby Holmes had just been on Survivor, who's Keegan Brooksby's part, uh, now fiance. Who was on the list at yep, the time. on the list at the time, and he didn't come. And it was like, right, uh, let's do this. In the spirit of Abby, let's do Survivor. So me and Fraser McInnes was there. Josh Smith was there. Uh, Brendan Archie was there. It's just some cracking fellas. <laughs> anyway, it's like, right, uh, let's muck around and do this Survivor thing. So we got to Cambodia. I'm thinking about all these ideas on the plane. And it was like, right, uh, night one, we're doing an eviction. We get there in the morning, day one. And boys, we should be doing this cultural thing. We're going to the killing fields. We're doing like these prisons where people have just been tortured beyond belief. And without wanting to sound disrespectful, all we're thinking about is Survivor and who's getting eliminated tonight. Alliances. <laughs> Allegiances. Like, it's this three-hour tour through this prison. Have you, do you, did you yeah. do the prison? Yeah. It's like a guided it's tour. It's harrowing. It is. It's terrible. And you put the headphones on and like you play this thing and it takes you to every room and what are you doing? And you're obviously being very respectful in the rooms. A lot of bad stuff's happened. But the walk between rooms, headphones, <laughs> headphones off. off. What are we doing? What are we <coughs> me and you to the end. Like this, all <laughs> this sort of nonsense. And then, anyway, Oscar Allen was on the trip and he's a loud mouth for anyone who knows him. And it was right around the point where like, it's Foghorn Oscar Allen. He hasn't reined it in yet and he's just talking, talking, talking. Me and Horse, Fraser McInnes are just like, he's got to go. And so we tr- we talk, we're never up like, yep, this is it, this is it. Yeah, he's gone. Anyway, get him on side, pretend that he's on our side and we'll blindside him later on in the night. And then, oh what, no. and then <clears throat> what we did was we had everyone in my room that night set the camera up in the bathroom with the paper slips that you write your stuff on. <laughs> go, go in there. Say Tribal who council. Gonna, say, yeah, say who you're going to vote for, write it in a piece of paper, put it in the hat. Paul Morrison was there with us, so he was reading it all out. Bloody Paul Morrison. And then Got a previous relationship with Paul Morrison. <laughs> Brilliant. Time. So, hang on a minute. So everyone's in there writing their stuff on. <laughs> And I'll show you this video. <laughs> off we'll get a new beer sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> this video is so funny. So I go in first. Oscar, sorry to do this to you, mate. Yeah, the it's reader. one of the great blind sides. Show the photo. Oscar, yeah. I've even drawn the love heart with a little crack heart. Yeah, I love a little, it. Thinking that he's going to get blindsided. And then Fraze comes in and puts these like, puts his <laughs> goggle, his riding sunnies on. And he walks in and goes, Ozzy, I feel like Stevie Wonder right now, mate. You've just been blindsided. <laughs> <laughs> Puts his name in the thing, drops it in. Anyway, the next eight people proceed to vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, we're sitting out. I have no idea. We're sitting out there, and it's like, righto, first vote. Ozzy, Oscar Allen. I'm sitting there looking at Fraser. Yeah, this? <laughs> Second vote, Second Aussie. vote, Oscar Allen. How good is this? <laughs> Third vote, Hamish. Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Fourth vote, Hamish. Hamish, Hamish, the first person eliminated. I survived. I kept voting here is Hamish. I'm sitting there with my hands in my head. What is going on? Oh, one of the great blind sides. In hindsight, who orchestrated it? Uh, I think Brian Nainsworth orchestrated it. Which oh, and he ended up winning because of this. What ended up happening is he'd gone off on a tangent with someone that day. I think it might have even been Josh Smith, and was like, "May as well just vote Hammer out, hey?" And he was like, "Yeah, sounds pretty good." <laughs> this was just before I got to them to speak about Oscar, so I'm shattered. But they ended up going through and anyway, it worked well in the end because I had a lot more time on my hands to think about the game. So I ended up setting up the rest of the game like, right, we've got immunity challenges here. We had this two-hour trip to go and set up the camp, uh, so to, to build these houses. And I was like, right, everyone make sure you bring a pen and a paper on the next bus trip. We're in the bus and I've written down on a piece of paper, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I said, right, it's 20 questions. You all write me down your question, send it in the back. I'll write yes or no. First person to get it wins and has immunity for tonight. So like they're all guessing and like, is he a ma- is it a man? Uh, is he an athlete? All the rest of it. And I'm right, as you do, with 20 questions. But I just had a lot of time to think because I'd been blindsided like you wouldn't believe oh, on this right. first and, night. And Braden Ainsworth, the the, mo- the silent assassin, he's the right. nicest man you'll ever meet. Taken yeah. down... Taking King, King Dick over here. <laughs> yeah. one, one of the best expressions on Survivor is when, you know, tribal council is happening and someone who thinks they're very safe is just sitting there and all of a sudden their name gets caught out and they start looking around and time and time again. It's very good. That was me- I could not have been <laughs> harder blind. So, like, I thought I was as safe as you get. I was so confident. And then the first name, Oscar. Oscar. Hamish. And I was just thinking, oh, my goodness. All right, back to footy. So, 2017, <laughs> as you self-described, um, you know, you, you thought you could have worked harder. 2018 is a premiership year. Yep. What, what are your rec- re- recollections of that season as a player and a part of that group? 
Uh, well, again, I was never a chance to play in that premiership side. So that 2018 was my actual first. I was drafted in yes. 2017. 2018 sorry, was my sorry, first sorry, year. Yes. And looking back on it, that might have been why I didn't try as probably hard as I should have because I was just never a chance. Like if I could try as hard as I want in that year and unless everyone got sick or everyone was you know injured, I was probably not going to play. And so... Halfway, not halfway through the year, and I can't even remember a date, but it was just like I am really enjoying being a part of this football club that is just winning all the time. And we had we were having trademark meetings about, or you know, we're building up to a flag, and everyone was sort of without saying it, everyone was saying it. We've got a special group here, and I'm sure you remember it, but it was very much like this is something special that we can build on. It was your <coughs> first year though, so yeah. like, you're like, well, this is just normal. So exactly, I was just living it up, and I was like, this is great, and then. Back end sort of last couple of games and finals come round and I'm just thinking, right, I'm not playing, so I'm enjoying it now. And I remember games, you boys would smash, smash Melbourne and I went out on the cans with the horse and Nick who wasn't playing and Shep who was injured and like just got absolutely plastered and it was awesome <laughs> because we're going to a grand final and, to, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to play, but I'm just having a great time being a part of it. So that's almost what it was. It was like being a... Sp- Still probably in the mode of being a spectator, but being in the four circle, in the walls, and just in loving every second of it. So you, you might think right, a high draft pick doesn't have much to do with the 2018 season. You say you're not going to get play, you're not going to have much to do with it. I've got a story that involves Hamish uh, about the 2018 prelim against that Melbourne team that you went out and drank afterwards. Did you find the answer to that question, Charlie, by the way? Two brothers playing West Coast and Did, I was just about to hop in with it. Please do. So I, I will accept a fine on this if I am wrong. But as far as I can tell... We've got a fine session on this podcast. Oh, yeah, that's very good. As far as I can tell, no two brothers have played for West Coast and Freo. There's like been it. a few sets of brothers at one club, but not at both clubs. There you there go. You go. Well, well, maybe I should have introduced you like that, but that's very nice. Very very well. So this story, 2018 pr- uh, prelim final, um, it's the Thursday before the game. Um, this is the one in Perth <coughs> v yep, Melbourne. We've beaten, yeah. we've beaten Collingwood in the qualifying. Um, we've, we've tagged Grundy. Uh, no, we haven't tagged Grundy yet because haven't done that. But coming into Melbourne, um, I remember being in a leadership group meeting, which was strange for me, given I was <laughs> never in a leadership group. But I was in this room and it was Adam Simpson, um, Josh Kennedy, Shannon Hearn, Jeremy McGovern, the leaders, and Scoey. <laughs> anyway, the topic of the meeting was, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going we're gonna, to you know, do this against the Melbourne side. These are the plans. Do we, like every other week, allow the full group to come into the team meeting room or do we leave everyone out other than the 22 that are playing because Hamish's brother, Angus, plays for Melbourne? Wow. Hey, I've heard this. Do you know, have you heard this before? Yeah, I've heard you sort of speak about it before. <clears throat> so it wasn't a trust issue, I suppose, from Hamish that was being raised. It was just... Well, it's a connection. Don't and put him in the position. The, spe- to, yeah. the specific thing that they were worried about was the tagging of Gorn. So they were gonna the, the 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 game plan, and it happened in the grand final against Grundy. But Gorn on the in the prelim, Scott Lyson and Nathan Vardy were not going to play in the ruck. They were just going to tag Gorn. That that was like a, it was something we hadn't done all year. hadn't something we hadn't done at all, and we didn't want that getting back to Melbourne. So we had that team meeting, just the twenty two in the room, and it wasn't for any other reason other than. Your brother played for Melbourne. Did yeah, you know about that? I, I've heard you speak about this somewhere along the line, and it happened. It did happen. And look, which yeah, I, I I don't think it needed to, but it's interesting that it did. Very interesting that it did. And I have had a lot of conversations with Angus and Andrew about football, and a lot of time, like I've have not played either of them in an AFL level, but every way, every time Melbourne play West Coast or Fremantle play West Coast, I get a question saying, you know, what's doing, what's happening here, what's doing this. And even like this year just gone, Andrew was, oh, who's Nelson going to tag? Or Angus is like, is Clary going to get tagged? Clayton Oliver. Yeah. And I, every time, I, I'd give them nothing. But like if that, for an example, if that had been, um, you know, leading into the prelim, I would have said something like, oh, Scoey's playing in the ruck and <laughs> Shannon Hurd's coming out of full forward. Like I would have just said something <laughs> stupid like that. But 
it is funny that uh, that Simo had to question it. And for the, yeah, I remember that because it was like we'd been in every other team meeting, and I do remember that because I was never a chance. And I was like, this is so boring. I'm just learning how to play Collingwood. We're playing Collingwood this week. I'm learning how to play Collingwood when we do match sim, and we've got to be the witches hats, and I've got to pretend to be Collingwood like I'm ever going to be, you know, playing like Scott Pendlebury. <laughs> and so I just remember those meetings being like, this is so boring. Obviously, you've got to do it to help the team, but like, just I'm never. This sucks. And then I remember coming to the prelim like, geez, this is weird. Like, how, how good? I'll <laughs> go kick balls this? out the oval. <laughs> go kick balls. So another story you've been involved in that we've actually covered twice on this podcast. One, um, it came up with Kyle Goblin, uh, coach of... Vice captain. Vice captain of Western Force. Yep. Um, he spoke about fines and being fines master. And then a story came out of that podcast that we followed up with Josh Kennedy. Now, Josh <laughs> Kennedy... Spun a wheel in a fine session yep. and he spun up a dare from the playing group. And yeah. that dare was yep. call the Adam coach, Simpson. Adam Simpson. Adzi. Yeah, I remember this. So <laughs> we know how that goes down. Josh Kennedy calls Adam Simpson Adzi. Adzi. Yep. Doesn't go well. No, Gets God, the no. death. Went down there. like a lead balloon. Are you in your first year when this happens? Is yep. this 2018? Yeah, it's 2018. I would have been seven months into a contract. Yeah, it's about <laughs> round 12. Yep, there, thereabouts, midway through the year. So what happens post that meeting then? Because because Josh has a chat with Simo after that meeting. Yeah. You know, probably don't do that again in front of the group. We need to stay focused. It's an important part of the year. Exactly. Now, I have listened to this. I've been sent this a million times of JK on your podcast the other day, and I've heard what he said, and I want to rectify a few things. Oh, it wasn't far off, Okay. to be fair. was not far off. It wasn't. He said, it, by my recollection, he said it was a couple of days later. It was that afternoon. So I remember this being in a morning meeting, and that was that afternoon. Now, you've walked the halls of Subi more than most people. Yep. Coming off the track, if you're walking to the medical room, it's a long, very narrow corridor. I've got off the track, turned left, and seen Simo. I'm walking, I'm about five metres into this, what would be a 30-metre walk? Yeah, it's long. Long walk, and Simo's turned. Us Wait, two only. Let's just pause for a second. I need your reaction to JK saying Adzi. Oh, like hilarious. Yeah. yeah, like everyone's just... Uh, you, may, you may have been the bloke that brought up Adzi. I can see that sort <laughs> of... Yeah, I don't <laughs> think it was. I don't want to take credit for that. But like everyone's sitting there like, oh, when's he going to say it? He dropped Adzi. Everyone... <laughs> and there's too much... Who's called me Adzi? Like, <laughs> what's going on? Anyway, that goes ahead. And like, it, that was a pre-training meeting, whatever. And it would have been... Four hours later, after training, that I'm walking this corridor, 30 metre straight, and it's a two metre wide corridor, metre and a half, so very narrow. <laughs> only <laughs> only us two. So I've turned, I'm walking all by myself thinking, great, I've got to go to the medical room to get something. Simo walks around the corner, turns left. At this point, in my seven months at the club, being nowhere near selection, I would have spoken to Adam Simpson all of four times. <laughs> The first time did being... Did you know your name? He did, I think. The first time being, hey, mate, congrats on being drafted. The <laughs> second time, sitting us all in a group and sort of outlining, you know, where do you all see yourself? And The third time being, hey, mate, how's your dad? Because my dad and him are somehow mate, or somewhat mates from the North Melbourne days. So four times, and it, twice about my dad. So it's four times he's spoken to me in my seven months at the club. <laughs> twice about your dad. Twice <laughs> about my dad. So it says a lot about where I was at. Anyway, turn the corner, walking by myself, Simo turns the corner... And I am 20 metres away from him. And he's turned and seen me just devastated that I'm walking in his direction. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> I'm not in that respect, but like, he just, he's a private man, likes to go about his business. It's like, oh, he's a, he's a first year kid. He's a little whippersnapper. <laughs> what's he going to, what's he going to give me? Probably still rattled about the other thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm walking. As we get closer, we're 10 metres apart at this point. <laughs> it's so the longest <laughs> corridor yeah, in the yeah, I know, I've got a lot going through my mind. It's a heartbeat just in the <laughs> back. It, within a split second, I'm thinking, should I do it? Should I do it? Should <laughs> I do it? Anyway, because I'm thinking at this point, I've got no relationship with it. Like, I'm trying my best, but there's just no, there's no chemistry here. We haven't sparked yet. You're looking for the icebreaker. I'm looking for an icebreaker <laughs> that will hopefully get me a game out of the clouds. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> 10 metres away. And I've gone the old, uh, oh, Adzi, hey? Shocking call. Shocking <laughs> call. <laughs> I've given it the old, oh, Adzi, hey? And looking back on this, and Simo will agree, if I'm sure Simo listens to Backjack. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not. He will agree that this was spineless on his behalf. <laughs> he is <laughs> <he's> absolutely <laughs> spineless. But he has <laughs> chuckled with me. He's chuckled with me. I've chuckled. He's chuckled. 
He's continued to walk past me <laughs> two metres to my rear. So he's gone past me at this point and has hit me with it. As I'm leaving, I'm thinking, beautiful, that was good. Nice direction. <laughs> okay, he's playing this weekend. <laughs> yeah, playing this weekend. I don't know. He's walked past and gone, probably wait until you win a couple of Coleman's before you call me that. The drive-by, as he's gone past me. So, and he will agree... If he remembers it as clearly as I do, he will remember that it was a spineless move on a first-year player. But he's walked past me and hit me oh. with the... Yeah, wait until you win two commas to call me Addy. And your And, your and I that. have just absolute... I've, it's an undes- indescribable feeling. Like when you're swimming and see a shark, your guts just drop. Everything, you feel like your heart's come out of your ass, and you've just shit your own heart out and you're just dead inside. That's what it felt like for me. I was just, oh, I couldn't, I can't, it's, that's it's it. It's good to see you've forgotten this moment that, too. It's etched in my memory forever. <laughs> oh, my sweaty boy. Yeah, that is exactly oh. what it felt like. I could shit my heart out my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I was at. That's where I was at oh. when Simo had kicked me when I was down. Don't two do meters this up. to me, man. Anyway. I meant to go on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, that is very, very. That's where it was at. Tears. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's where. Yeah. You, you got any questions for Hamish? Uh, no, I'm just trying to. I'm just, okay. vi- I'm just envisaging on. it. I'll continue on. You want to follow anything there? Yeah. Yeah, um, that. no, what, was the, what was the next conversation? Oh, it would have been a year. You're delisted. You're delisted. Hey, mate, you're delisted. <laughs> Actually, it was the next one was in Cambodia. Hey, mate, you're a little bit fat at the moment. Probably sort that out. <laughs> to be fair, I was. Anyway, oh, gosh. Yeah, right. Good times. Breathe. Now, I, would, oh, I can't do another funny story. I need to break it up. Yeah. 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 Cracking fella, by yeah. the way, Simo. So let me just throw that one out there. I'm just, just etched in my a spineless move by him. But uh, yeah, good fella. All right. So, okay. Can we go from funny to serious? Yep. Um, of course. Another big moment. Oh, mate, I'm really actually conscious of like talking about your brothers and not oh, you. I don't care. They're no, way better than me. Yeah, <laughs> They're well, so much better than me. Yeah, but I mean, it's actually your story they'll want. But a big moment is like you're playing on the list with Andrew Gaff. You're yep. all mates. You play golf. Oh, Oh, yeah, of course. Here we go. And then there's a big, big incident, right? You belts brother, him in the head. <laughs> Andrew Gaff belts him in the head, gets suspended for eight weeks. Yep. Misses that. That's that's probably not long after the Adzi moment, honestly. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks probably, later. Yeah, probably a few weeks later. Actually, that was another time he spoke to me. Anyway, no, we'll uh, leave that. Well, okay, so that's a difficult position for you to be in. Yes. I don't want to speak about Andrew. Yep. But like that's a difficult position for you to be in. You, yep. You're the teammate of a bloke that's hit your brother. Yep. Like in normal society... You're down at the pub and someone whacks your brother. You, you just belt him. Yeah. Down. Yeah. So how do you recall that sort of little It period? was, yeah, very, very interesting couple of weeks, really. So he – it was such an innocuous on-field incident that it was just like off the ball and Andrew – Gaffey had dominated the first half and having spoken to Andrew after, it was like Ross had said, you've got to tag him on the wing. Yeah. So Andrew's checking him off the ball and like trying to stop his runs, stop his, stop his influence on the game. And Wouldn't have been the first time that happened to Andrew. Yeah, exactly. Like he's, it would have happened to him. He's played 200 games at this yeah. point. And anyway, it's just, I remember watching the footage back and it was a check at a stoppage and Gaffey had done the same thing, thrown his arm, but like hit him in the stomach. And it was like just trying to get him off, shaked him, pushed away, running down the wing, the ball's on the other side. Andrew, my brother Andrew, has pushed him. Gaffey has tried to push back. Andrew's gone to push him again and... When you push someone, you sort of drop down a level to then get set your feet and push. And as he's dropped that level to swing and push, Gaffy has thrown the hand that's got him in the jaw. He's on the floor, he's come off and he's bleeding and whatever. And I'm in the player's box watching and everyone's like, oh, he dropped like a sack of potatoes, he's got a glass jaw, all the rest of it. And then about no more than probably five minutes later, the footage came out on AFL.com of... The, the actual hit and everyone's got their phones up looking at it and showing me and I'm thinking oh geez this is um like this is a, and the footage of him I think it's a, a photo with him and Ken Withers the Freo doctor walking off and he's got like his hand on his face with a mouth with a towel and just pissing Full blood out of his yeah. mouth yeah so he was in a world of hurt he was crying at that point and just like you thought it, you'd put that in there, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you didn't have just to say that right, right. little brother he was crying <laughs> gutless anyway um, <laughs> anyway he's walking off and everyone it's like wow this is um, a bit more than just like a, an off field incident and it hadn't happened since like Barry Hall even like yeah. since a, a big hit like that hadn't happened in a long long time probably who, who belted did Goldstein belt someone or I don't know Tyrone Vickery Tyrone hit Tyrone Dean Vickery. Cox hit Dean Cox played that in that game ruck, yeah, there we started go. and <laughs> continued my 
still to this day hatred of Tyrone Vickery. Like, yeah, yeah RIP. I suppose. Yeah, yeah there, well, there you go. So that it hadn't happened in a long time as a big hit, and it dawned on us after about ten minutes in the box that it was a big hit, and it had gone from oh playful jokes, your brother's got a glass jaw, to oh actually something could be wrong. This is awkward. <clears throat> yeah, and I got a call from Mum, and she was in hysterics. She was at the game, and it was like we're in the ambulance, we're on the way home, we're going. And I remember thinking, like, well, geez, this is um, this is a bit awkward. Like, Gaffy's out there and he's just belted my brother. And I know I was pretty good mates with Gaffy at the time. I came to the club. Not many people played golf. He did. I'd played a lot of golf with him, and we were pretty good mates. And so <clears throat> I remember thinking, like, Gee, that's just so out of character for him to do it. And I remember watching the clip probably five times that at the game, and all that's all I needed. And I was like, Andrew has definitely dropped a level here to push him and so the hit was not in my mind and other people might think differently in my opinion the hit was not intended for his face it was for the chest as that's a normal footy act to get someone who's annoying the shit out of you to get off and so i have just like i well, he's hit him in the face but it was a complete accident so that's that was my ruling pretty early on yeah after the game gaffy was just like in hysterics. He was just sort of head in his hand. Walking. It was like that in the game because I was on the. I done my hammy that game. I was on the bench, and because I was on the bench, you don't have you don't have the phones with you. Yeah. And I remember I was sitting. So there's that footage of, there's footage of him like hand like shaking yeah. his head on the bench, and Simo's next to him. Skip I'm next to time. Simo. Yeah. yeah. And for the whole quarter, I was like, Gaffy, get your shit together. Yeah, like, what's, what's going, going on, on, mate? Like, and he's like just, just inconsolable. Like he could not. I've never seen someone like that on the bench. And I thought. I didn't know what had happened. People yeah. booing. Oh, I didn't know for the whole quarter. Yeah. He, he went back out there in the second half or in the back half of the third and then the fourth quarter. And at three-quarter time, having mates on the other side, it was like Ross Lyon was trying to hold everyone back. We spoke like, to Ballantyne on this podcast about Yeah. They were like trying to – Wild animals. Yeah. They were like, I just want to – we want to go out there and kill Andrew Gaff. And Ross was having to sort of say, boys, we're still trying to play this derby and whatever. And so – there's that one where Gaffy gets a ball kicked out on the wing. Keep going. Gets the ball kicked out on the wing and he's running onto this loose ball. And it's Ballantyne, I think Brady Gray. Yeah. Running at him. Yep. And he gets this ball and it's just in the position where like you can't be weak and pull out. You have to get this ball. Gets it and kicks it. Two seconds later, just bang. Absolutely clobbered by these two blokes who just wanted to kill him. And so I feel bad for him in that sense, but like he also belted my brother. So, but uh, anyway, that was it was pretty quickly. I was like, he didn't do it on purpose. I don't like I'm still his friend, and it doesn't bother me that much. I know that he's okay because I got a phone call from mum saying we're going to hospital. His teeth, are, his jaw is broken. His teeth are pushed back, but he'll be fine. So I was like, who cares about him? <laughs> Gaffy will be right. <laughs> Andrew will be right, but Gaffy is obviously in a bit of trouble. So I remember saying to him after the game, I was like. I don't worry about it, mate. Like it's he, he's okay. I said to him after the game in the room, so I was like, he's off to hospital, but he's okay. And so I think that was the first time he'd heard of it. So he was, uh, he was, you know, thanks, mate. Anyway, what, was that a Saturday game? Oh, testing me there. Yeah, because it was a couple of days. Saturday like, game. Yeah, Saturday <coughs> or Sunday. Yeah. So Saturday, I remember seeing Andrew that night. He'd gone to all the hospitals were closed at this point. He had to get someone to open up a room to come and work on his mouth. I don't know if anyone's ever heard this story before, but like... That's what we're here for. Yeah, breaking news. He went in and it was like, because no one was there, they couldn't get an, an anaesthetist in time to put him completely under. And the doc was like, mate, this could either... You can you can sit here for three hours while we wait for this guy to come and put you under, or I can just give you a lot of local around your mouth and I'll just do it. And he's like, jab me up, doc. So Andrew got about eight local injections around his mandible, around here, and the doc just reached in and wrenched his teeth back in place. Oh. So they were all, if you've seen, there's a photo of him in the back of an ambulance with his teeth like all pushed in here and the doctors jabbed him up all around here so he couldn't feel a thing and just went, <coughs> ripped him back into place, wired him up and sent him on his way. Under local. <coughs> under local. Under a lot of Jeez. local. Yeah, Enough but, local to put down a yeah, horse. Yeah, but you, you do that 99 out of 100 under general anaesthetic. You're asleep. Yeah, under more, probably 999 out of 1,000. He was a one off. Wow. But, so they've done it under local. They've, Reset his teeth and, and wired him up, and I saw him that night, and it was like he's okay. So I know his teeth look funny, and he's got a you know, braces, almost sort of a wire shutting his jaw. So he's all right. And then two days later, I see Gaffy at the club, and I'm thinking, I I like to break ice with humour, as <laughs> we saw with Adzi. So <laughs> and you're good I'm, at it, very yeah, good, at it. <laughs> awesome at it. Works so every time. Works every time. So I'm just sort of there thinking, like, righto. 
I know Andrew's okay. I know Andrew Gaff is just distraught at this point. He's getting slagged in the media about he's a thug, whatever. And I know he's a nice guy. I know, he, in my opinion, he didn't mean to do it. So I'm thinking, how can I go about making his life what would have been rubbish? Like, how can I just ease the tension a little bit? So I think, right, it'll be a good idea on Monday going in to meet him. He was going back to Melbourne on Tuesday because he was going to get go to the tribunal and then he was done for the rest of the year. So he went back to Melbourne for about a month. All right, righto. Put my mouth guard in. <laughs> Sounds bad already. Put the mouth oh, guard. Put oh, the mouth. I don't even know where you're going. Put with the this. mouth guard in. I'm stressed. Walk, boxing gloves on. <laughs> oh, mouth guard in. Boxing gloves on. Walked into the medical room where he was doing his Monday review, <laughs> and I was like, "Let's go, mate. Let's settle it." Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I just don't imagine Gaffy's reaction. He would not have he found was, that. He did not find it funny, and I was like, "Mate." I, I, pretty cool. seeing his reaction, I was like, "Mate, it's okay. He's fine. His teeth are all right. Don't worry about it." And he was like, "Oh, thanks, man." And I went up to him and sort of shook his hand, and that was the last I saw of him for like four four weeks. But yeah, I, I was pretty quickly like, "My brother's okay. I'm a friends with this guy who is in real struggle. He's struggling, struggle town. Yeah, and trying to make him feel a little bit better about himself. It's good Gee. insight. Yeah. So that's the uh, yeah, that was the was a couple of days after the incident." I remember, um, and I don't know how far after this was. I mean, this would have been a fair, f- a fair while after actually. Um, you kicking for goal in practice and um, Vardy. Oh yeah, and Vardy uh, screaming. Uh, Andrew Ga- was he was he yelling uh, Andrew Gaff as you were yeah. about to kick a goal? Is it is it for your shot at playing? I th- no, it was. For- Gaffy was kicking. It was like a birthday kick. So you spin around and you have 10 spins, hold the ball above your head and kick for goal. That's right. And I remember Vars was standing in the market and was yelling, Bra- Andrew Brayshaw, Andrew <laughs> Brayshaw. <laughs> oh, I'm wetting myself. Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> and then, but because it was mic'd up and put on social media, someone had heard it. And yeah, you got like, This is for unbelievable. It. Like, how can you possibly do this? And, and anyway. you gotta, you got to understand within, like, I know there's always outside interpretation and impressions and everyone will make their own mind up. You know, thug, meant to do it weak uh accident there, there's all the range but when you're in a footy club you do know people personally and so when stuff like this happens it's usually pretty accepting there's not many things that happen on the footy field even such a bad situation like that and that was a bad situation you know a kid gets his jaw broken he's a young kid and he, he's on a senior player and that's probably as bad as it gets really but most people inside the four walls even at frio i think probably would have come around to the fact like it's just what happened. You, you, there's not too many guys that are walking around holding on to that. So that one that comes out of Vardy, like we've as a footy group and it like have long moved on. It takes about two or three days, and you're worrying about the next game and yeah. training and going to the gym. Like you're not you're not thinking yeah, you're not oh thinking, like that oh, time. I remember when Gaffy, but whereas fans Gaffey. are and yeah. the media are, and they're waiting for that moment that yeah. that oh, Vardy Gaffey moment still gets booted. Well, days. and fair enough, he should. He should get booed every time he plays Fremantle for the rest of his life. They should boo the living daylights out of him. That's no worries at all. <laughs> yeah, but it's just you know in jest, yeah, as, they as, as they should, as they should. Yeah, absolutely. They're Frio fans. Yeah, you should. If this opposite thing happened. What do you think, West Coast? Yeah, fans? West Coast. What yeah. do you think you would be doing? You, <laughs> you're a nuffy. No, be, not nuffy I, no. I'm not nuffy. I'd be going. I, I, I understand both yeah, sides. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, yeah, he should be getting booed for the rest of his life playing Fremantle. But within the yeah. Do you boo Andrew Gaff? He's a Freo Mantle supporter over here. Yep. Oh, I do have, have a bit of a boo- funny story. Yeah. I have in the past, but I, I try not to these days. You know, no, I, I boo, I boo Andrew, Andrew Gaff every time. What's, your, ball what's your funny Mantle. story? Oh, it was one guy in front of. I was at the footy with a mate, and one guy in front of us, Eagles fan, was just getting so angry at people booing Gaff, and I wasn't. Me and my mate weren't really, but he turns around and goes, really? "Oh yeah, booing. put it on, lads," and so. <laughs> <laughs> so for the rest of the game, we just were right in his ear, booing the whole yeah, time. Well done. Oh, I would have done the same thing. But no, fair enough. Boo him as much as you like for the rest of his career against Fremantle. But uh, anyway, even fine. even Ballas, is, you know, yeah, is, is he was one just of been like, and he was one of the guys who was like, let me at him, like, yeah, and, and, Ros- and Ros- Roscoe, you, you know, be. you do what you need to do, but do it with you know within the letter of the law, I guess. But then uh, you know when we spoke to Ballas, he's like, and Gav's not, you know. Not that guy, like you know, so it's they've yeah. played golf since they've like they've interacted since in respectable manners and they've got to know each other a little bit and it was like the, the next time they played each other was the JLT the year after and it was first centre bounce Simo played Gaffy on ball for the purpose of shaking his hand at the first centre bounce that was on film that was put everywhere on the media and it was like done correct no worries 
can we um we while we're on we're you can do whatever you like. We're on the brothers um, change tact a bit to Angus because I want to ask about the helmet thing. Perfect, of course. So, obviously, where's the helmet? Yep. And before um, before we started this chat, it just sort of came up, and I said to Will, "Have you ever, you know, donned the helmet as a as a player?" And you said something about a sponsorship deal, and so I want you to tell us about that because you didn't go, you didn't elaborate. Yeah, I, like, I like the segue. Very good. So. Oh, I didn't get many sponsorships over my career. One one good one was Temper. Looked after me for a bit. Nice. Um, That's a great sponsorship. It's very cool. Yeah, you've still yeah, talked about for a long time. Absolutely. I'll plug them. Got it. Plug them. Go yeah, for it. No, nah, well, they're not looking after me right <laughs> okay, now. Well, yeah, anyway, I'll just look after Shelter and Whippersnapper and the crew over there. Yeah. Cameo and Blue Bear. Shelter, Blue excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Don't we'll have to scale it. It's Charlie, really clip that. Drink it responsibly. <laughs> so, mid... Mid career, probably peak earning stage at this, which it wasn't a lot anyway, Hammer. But it was, <laughs> I've it was been there, mate. <laughs> it wasn't a lot, but it was a stage where we had a few deals, you know, maybe an ASIC sponsorship or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, my my manager rings me up and says, "Got a sponsorship deal for you." Perfect. What is it? It's for it's for. I'm gonna tell you how much it was for. I think it's relevant. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll say how much it was for before I'll tell you what it was for. It's twenty thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! For, for one a year. season. And I was like, yes, no worries, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I will sell anything. Twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> what do you want me to wear? You want me the boots, the pink boots? No worries. No sure, worries. I'll wear them. You want me to? You want me to wear long yeah. sleeve for the whole whole? Thing? No worries. Uh, you want me to? You want me to cut my hair? Yeah. Big big yep. strip down the middle. Absolutely. <laughs> Brucey Dool style. Yeah. yeah. Want you to wear a helmet? Helmet sponsorship twenty thousand oh, dollars. Wow. It's like wow and. I don't think anyone did it. I don't. I don't. I don't remember I can't anyone remember at the, the time. Last West Coast players. Because like Caleb, wow. Caleb Daniel. No, it wasn't just West Coast. It was a national sponsorship that right. I reckon they were. If they got down to me on the list, oh, they'd that, gone through some names. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Will Scott so was Caleb, not in your. Caleb top Daniel's 10. always won one. Angus has always won. Nah, one. not always. Only since concussions. Right, yeah. and so. Is there anyone else that wears them in the competition? I think Paddy McCartan might have worn one for a couple of years at Saints, but, but I can't remember anyone down. else wearing them over the over the journey. So. Well, Phil t- Knuckle before your time I wore the motorbike helmet. He wore the not motorbike. He wore he wore the bicycle <laughs> the helmet. Crash helmet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I turn it down. No, no. Wow. No. I wonder what Caleb Daniel would be on. A bit more than what you would have been on. I thought. But he's he's oh, he's, 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 he's like saying yeah, he's the same, same helmet. helmet that you have. Which I feel which like is not, a lie. It's got to be a lie. And it's also not doing. You know, you can't just wear safe. the same cricket helmet for like twenty years. Yeah, got to be a lie. Um. Uh, Angus's helmet. Yeah, it's got a bit of a life of its own, though, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So he, well, he had a lot of concussions in his second year. I think I remember he got four in about two months. So he had one, wow. one, and then this was before the twelve day protocol. So he had one, had a week off, came back, got another one, but it was a real light one, and he felt good by the Thursday for a Saturday game, and they played him, and then, but he was playing VFL at this point, so they played him, and he got. Hit behind the, he got torped in the back of the head for one of them in a wet game against in at Windy Hill against Essendon VFL. Wow, uh, I think it might have even been Alex Neil Bullen just torped it in the back of they his actually head. Actually, like uh, that would hurt, that yeah, would hurt, hurt a lot. Fierce, so that mate. floored him. He spent three weeks out for that one. Came back first game back contest. He was leading up at the footy. Typical spoil, got him right in the back of the head, f- absolutely knocked him down. Wow. And he had about eight weeks off. And he was living Jeez. at home living at home at this point for two weeks. He couldn't leave his room and was like lights down, sensitive to anything, couldn't – everyone had to be quiet downstairs. He was in a real bad way. And he had a lot of talks with a lot of physicians and all that sort of stuff coming back as to whether the helmet would do anything. But more so than anything else, it was mum just being like – you got to wear this helmet, otherwise I can't physically watch you play football. So I was like, right, I wear the helmet. First game back against St Kilda. Kobe Much, I think it was. Head knock with him. Who then, he Kobe perforated his eardrum. Angus was fine. Wow. And he's like, well, I'm never taking this off. So wow. he's, he's worn oh. it ever since, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I've, seen, I've seen a social media. Yeah, on the mind of its own. I'm sure that's where we were leading. Go for it. Well, Ang- uh, Angus Brayshaw's helmet has a social media profile. Yeah, it does. That has more followers than most of Backchat combined. Yeah, so... 5,000 followers. Yeah, I remember one day thinking like, well, uh, Jaden Hunt's headband had a social media. Yeah. And I was like, that's nothing. He's <laughs> he's not as good as Angus is. So bugger it, I'm making a helmet Instagram. So I made this helmet Instagram. 
was putting up stupid stuff like it at the dinner table with a couple of beers and Mexican like oh good night in and then putting it in the washing machine and saying like nothing like a good bath so just <laughs> dumb stuff like this That's and it, it it had, like it was moseying along it had like four hundred followers five hundred followers or something and Angus went on the footy show but this was deteriorating footy show post my uncle and all the rest of them and yes. it was like. Dylan Alcott and a couple of other like it was Brenda Favola was on there and it was good but like it was before it petered out and he, Trevor Marmalade had moved on oh Marmalade was long gone yes anyway it was like Dylan Alcott had said oh I've, I've seen something about your helmet and put up brought up my Instagram page and I was hoping to keep the anonymity about it but Angus, I was I was actually just beating around the bush I didn't know if people knew that you run yeah this no thing. everyone does so I, I was hoping to keep it secret but Angus was like brother runs this stupid Instagram about my helmet and puts up all these dumb photos and right. Dylan was like everyone go and follow this now and I remember I because it was, airs in Melbourne two hours before it does in um, in Perth and Angus had told us that he was going on so I, I was going to watch it and my phone I was out at Pazaka in Scarborough <laughs> at dinner my phone just started blowing up and it was like <laughs> oh my god what is happening here what is going on and I've just texted him saying like something's going on I've had like 4,000 followers in the last hour what is going on and because he was on the show he couldn't reply to me and I'm just sitting there at dinner my phone's in my pocket going <laughs> bananas had to mute the notifications <laughs> I got a text from him afterwards saying like I've just plugged you on the footy show oh. so I watch it later on and he said something and anyway I've gone from about 700 followers to four and a half five thousand in a night and then because he'd mentioned me Steeden who was his sponsor have sent me a helmet Saying like, hey, hey, Mish, heard you running this. Inst- I heard you running the Instagram. Here's a helmet in case you want to put up any photos. Because at this point, I was just using Brilliant. his. Great marketing. <laughs> Great <laughs> marketing. It. So good. you talk about your twenty thousand helmet sponsorship. How about just you get your twenty thousand? Nah, I just, just got the one. Just got the one free helmet. <laughs> anyway, I, <laughs> oh, that's right. So I, you know, I, I took that upon myself to take a lot of these photos in random places whenever I needed it. It's been a while. I need to get back on it, but. Um, I think we might need to re- be- reboot yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, reboot that page. But uh, yeah, the helmet did come in handy for the grand final. It was the morning, the last year's grand final. Yes. Morning of the grand final. Great segue. Let's talk about that. Yep. Morning of the grand final. We were having every, all my family's over. So mum and dad were over a couple of weeks before. The borders were hard shut down. They got in. They'd done their quarantine. Everyone was in Perth. And my brother and I were living in a house together. And it was like, everyone come in. My older brother will. We're going to have a massive breakfast at our house. We're going to catch the train into the game. We're all going to go. And it got to about nine o'clock that morning and I was four or five cans deep and I was like... <laughs> it's I a am. night grand final. <laughs> yeah. I was like, right, I, I am putting this helmet on for a laugh. Put the helmet on and mum was there and said something. I can't remember what exactly she said, but she's like, geez, I hope he doesn't need that helmet today or something like that as in like, oh, we hope he doesn't get hurt. And for whatever, I'm not a superstitious person. I'm not a spiritual person. I'm not anything. But I was like, I can't take this off just in case he does get hurt. And so I was like, well, mate, I'm keeping it on for the whole day. So I was riding the train into, (laughs) I was on the train into the stadium wearing this helmet. Everyone's looking at me like, who's this bloke wearing a helmet? Who is this On the way to the game. Pretty quickly clued on to the fact that I'm, you know, obviously brothers with the guy wearing a helmet out there and wore it to the game. And they won, and I didn't. It was a Saturday. I didn't take it off until Monday morning, and I was just wearing this thing all weekend. <laughs> went to sleep in it that night. Woke up the next morning. Went to the CB Beach Hotel with all the Melbourne boys. I'm still wearing this helmet. <laughs> it was absolute it's best weekend of my whole free life. Free entry into oh, anywhere. Sh- and Don't I, worry about the premiership medal. Just got yeah, the helmet. Well, I took Angus's. He- Sorry to the Cot Beach Hotel for what I'm about to say, but I took the premiership medal off him and wore it for about two hours because you got free piss if you were wearing the if you were a premiership player. And I was like, yeah, I'm Angus Brace. you got the helmet and the medal. <laughs> so Very I good. Rorted the Cot Beach Hotel for all their well, work. What do you think, you think I'm yeah. going to be wearing a helmet around here, mate? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like if I'm not <laughs> Angus anyway, Brace. Yeah, the helmet sponsorship. Well, it wasn't twenty grand. It got me a couple of hundred bucks worth of free beers. What Very was good. what was that like watching? Uh, Watching your brother win a premiership in your home state, which I mean, that's probably never going to happen again. Uh, not home state, it's state you're living in, like in here in WA. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was unbelievable. I mean, I'd never thought watching the West Coast boys play the premiership was amazing, and watching you win it, watching everyone, it was like you especially, it was awesome. Like straight out on the ground after the game and celebrating, and then the celebrations after the fact. Back to Perth, everyone's going bananas for the West Coast Eagles. It was great. But it was so different having an actual family member in there. Um, I remember after the game going down to the rooms and like 
taking photos with him in the Premiership Cup and I was a bit, su- not superstitious, but like I didn't want to touch the cup when we won it in 18 because I was like, I was still naive to the fact that I would get there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was like, I'll save that for when I win one. Got to listen three years later. Did you hear that? Don't touch yeah, yeah. the cup, mate. <laughs> I'm, for the, yeah, I'm for that. I'm for that. Yeah. Didn't touch the cup. I'll save that for when I win it. Delisted. Angus wins it. Give me this cup. Putting it on my head. <laughs> 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 Drinking out of it. <laughs> Drinking beer out of it. Won the cup. Anyway. So I'm so like. So touch the cup, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so putting, taking photos of this thing and like Angus. Classic. So my mum and dad were host, host parents for Melbourne Boys. We've had Clayton Oliver come through. We had Kazai Pickett. Um, we're very good family friends with the Spargos. So Charlie Spargo. We had all at Trent Rivers. Luke Jackson lived with us Pretty a little bit. Pretty much just birth, so half birth the team. Yeah. Squad. So like, her, I remember this photo we took. It was ma- I was taking it. Mum and Dad with all their huh. so it was Angus in there, Clayton, Cozzy, Luke Jackson, Trent Rivers, all of them in this photo. And I remember looking at it like I'm taking this photo. Like that is just it's just unbelievable that this has happened. I lived with Clayton. I lived with Angus, and this is just such a mass. And then the weekends and the weeks post was unbelievable. But it was. A different thing watching it with all my family there, and yeah, it was um, it was a, such a special occasion, and I'll never forget it. It was bloody good. That's bloody surreal. It's nuts. Yeah. Um, um, I want to finish on before we get to social media. Mm-hmm. I want to finish on a Hamish Bray show. We've done enough talking about yeah, your brothers. We've done a bit. You play one game. The West Coast. <laughs> yeah, what a game. There, mate, there's a, like, I know I know you're a self-deprecator. I know you like taking the piss out of yourself. But yeah. you play one game at I AFL did, level, yep, mate. I you sure did. So uh, you spoke about the Xavier O'Neill decision with, with you two, but uh, you play against St Kilda yep. at the Gabba yep. in the hub. That was a big – because I was with you a lot of that hub. We were, we were tra- <laughs> training and playing and used to play in these scrimmages where it was like 8v8 on another team. It was like, oh, well, we can't – play at another right. team but there wasn't you know we didn't have 22 players not playing there was like nine of us yeah. and we'd play a game with like two people in the middle it was like pick up football. AFL nines. yeah it AFL was nines. it was just a, that was, it was the, horrendous it was so bad i remember playing it, it ended our careers oh yeah it didn't it? i remember playing a game against richmond a scrimmage against richmond on like call it a game the they called it scrimmages it was just training yeah. a back oval at um, Metricon <coughs> And we played these Car park Car park It was 10v10 But they had more players Than we did So it was You basically let, matched Whatever the team didn't have So we had 10 fit players And they had like 13 or something So they played 10 with rotations And we played 10 Someone got injured In the second quarter Of our scrimmage And for anyone who's listening Like the Oh scrimmages must be all right. It was like 20 minutes straight and full there was ground. no full ground, no they, rotation. They didn't cone off one end of no, the ground. No, it was like right. was not half full AFL basketball. size it ground. Was just, yeah, yeah. It was just so – and I played. remember playing my one game and we'll get to that, but it was just like this is way easier than a scrimmage because I'm on for half the game. I'm getting a rest on the bench and I'm not running the full <laughs> ground. So anyway, playing this scrimmage against Richmond and we because this was later in the year, it was like everyone was over scrimmages. We were so done with it and it was like, righto, we're staying at the same hotel – We'll put a couple of slabs on this. Whoever loses goes and buys a few slabs at the end. And <laughs> at the third, halfway through this third quarter, one of our boys got injured. And so in the last quarter, it was like, righto, Richmond, give us a player. Which is under nine stuff to just give <laughs> someone it. a player. I love it. That's so At good. this point, Marby O'Chol was, was, was on the outer. Marby O'Chol was on the outer. That was like, good. righto, Cholly, here you go. Here's a West Coast jumper. Come and play for us. Chucked him at full forward. He, yeah, he was Chuck. He was full forward for us, but he was still drinking beers with the winning team that night. So that Richmond were up by a little bit, and for some reason they're still keeping score for the slabs. And then the ball comes in. He's got it. It's like four minutes to go. They're down by. We down by like three points. He's got absolute soda inside forward fifty. Purposely drops this thing, fumbling it around like misses a handball, gives it back to whoever Dion Prestia, who's coming back from injury or whatever it was. And they run it out. And I'm sitting there, Cholly, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Cholly, never Choli. met Cholly in our lives. Yeah. Cholly. Like, <laughs> anyway, they just waltz it out the other end, and we you know, we buy him a couple of slabs. And I'm just sitting there thinking that night, gee whiz, like that, <laughs> that, that's the hub in a nutshell. Yeah. West Coast lose to Richmond in a nine v nine yeah. and send them a couple of slabs that <laughs> yeah. night. That and Ch- Cholly's playing on West Coast. purposely cheating. And about one week later, Hamish Brayshaw debuts yeah, anyway, for West Coast. So I debut for West Coast off the back of just a comedy of injuries for them. They're just getting done one after the other, done, done, done. And like at this, so the first hub happened, didn't get a look in. Um, I remember thinking I'm 
scrimmaging okay, which was a joke at that point. <laughs> I'm um, scrimmaging okay. <laughs> and then... But you're in the bubble. In the bubble. So the first hub I was like, I thought I was there. We came back for four weeks to Perth before we had to go again. <clears throat> in that four weeks was the Xavier O'Neill, like, you're playing over me. So I was not completely done, but I knew I was finished at the end of the year. And I was just training really hard, but still enjoying the fact that I was just, you know, this would be my last six months with the boys. Gets to the second hub, mucking around, scrimmaging with Charlie. And then <laughs> <coughs> Jack Redden got injured, I think. Or Shuey got injured. Someone, and it was like, the la- I, was the, I was the last midfielder physically fit and available for this day. And the week before, they'd got injured. And so I'm just like, I am, I just can't not play this week. It has to be me. If it's not me, I am getting on the next plane and leaving. And I remember getting calls from like dad and all these people throughout the week saying like, <clears throat> you might be in, you might be in. And Anthony Stevens, who is a friend of my dad's and obviously played a lot of footy with Simo, North Melbourne, great, called me on the Wednesday night and said, <clears throat> mate, I played a lot of footy with Simo. I know he's going to respect this, but go knock on his door and say, I'm ready. If you need me, I'm ready to play this week. And if not, like that's okay, but I'm ready to go. Anyway, so I was like, I just got this weird burst of courage because Anthony Stevens has called me. I'm like, yep, done. Bang. What? Hung up. Walked to Simo's room because I no, I knew what room he was in because he was next to Jack Petricelli. Knock, knock, knock on the door. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock, knock. <laughs> Nothing. That's he. That's he. <laughs> Text Simo. Hey, mate. Uh, you know, just wondering where... You, this is like 8 o'clock at night, by the way. So <clears> On <throat> the Wednesday before team selection. Team day. selection on the Thursday. Knocked on the door and I'm like, I text him saying, Simo, where are you? I mean, I just want to have a you know quick chat. Where are you in your room? About, and like, and this is just pretty much sums up. Like, Adzi all over again. Get a text <laughs> from him saying like, hey, mate, just out at the moment. I'll catch you in the morning. <laughs> I was like, sweet. Build up all this courage to go oh, and knock on the coach's door. Never heard that. Only to hear that he's not out. And so anyway, I'll go back to my room. I still think in my heart, like, I know I have to be playing tomorrow. This is just ridiculous. I can't not be. There's physically no one else to pick. Like, <laughs> unless Paul Tucker, the physio, is going to pull a jumper on, I'm playing. So, wake up the next morning, team meeting that morning, few of the senior players, like, joking, like, coming up and sort of getting around, like, oh, you might be in this week and all the rest of it. And then, <clears throat> by this point, there was, like, six of us that debuted that year in the hub. And it was, the Simo would say before every team meeting, uh... Harry Edwards, what does player number 242 mean? What does 242 mean? He's like, oh, 242nd player to play for West Coast. Uh, Everyone went nuts. And like, I was trying to find him before this team meeting to tell him what Anthony Stevens had told me on the phone the night before. Couldn't find him. It was unbelievable. I was like looking everywhere for him. Couldn't find him. <clears throat> so meeting comes around. I walk in the meeting, sit down. I see him in the corner hiding somewhere. He gets <laughs> up and goes... The first thing in the meeting was Hammer. What does I think two hundred and forty five mean? Two fifty five. Two fifty five is a Hammer. What does two fifty five mean? And everyone by this point knew what it was, and so everyone just erupted. And I'm like, well, yeah, there we go. Thanks for hiding from me last night. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the whole That's build up was a bit funny. There's a little insight. But then what about playing? Rolled out to the game. I was playing f- half forward in the doom shift, oh like <laughs> run up, spark the stoppage, and then just sprint forward. But Playing this game, I remember getting to the ground, had to take the bus up from where we were staying, sitting on the bus, like, geez, I'm a little bit nervous here. Simo told me that I was starting on the ground. Um, and COVID crowds were limited, so there was like 5,000 people there, but I'd never played in front of anywhere near that mount. Rolled out, seeing this stadium, kicking footies before the game, in the rooms, like watching, doing the pre-game, like, this is just, <clears throat> this is surreal. Roll out, first centre bounce, I'm starting forward pocket, spend like two minutes on it and then come off. <laughs> um, I remember having a shot on, got a, Tim Kelly kicked me a ball, had a shot on goal. I'm, I'd, I'd practised from the exact same spot before the game had started. Rolled out, pushed it to the right, never looked like going in, oh. but like, oh, how good is this? i got a kick. <laughs> 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 and like, just every time I went near the ball, I had five touches or something on the game and got nowhere near it, but like every time you went near the ball, it was just... So exciting and just a different. I remember running into. I think Dougal Howard was at Saints, and I just ran into him. The ball was a it was a ground ball. I ran into him, took this big bump, got off a handball, and thought, "Geez, how good was that?" Ran up and only played like half the game. <laughs> it's like me watching my highlights. So yeah. watching a lot of it from the bench, and obviously off for the last five minutes of the game. It was a pretty tight game. We won by like sixteen points or something in the end. 
remember sitting on the bench and watching this game thinking like we're going to win this like this is we've come from behind in the last quarter Nick Nat and Tim Kelly are dominating in the middle That's right. I'm just it, it, basically a spectator but I've got some boots on and it was just the best thing ever finished the game Gatorade shower which was awesome someone I, I can't remember who told me but he's like take your boots off on the way in Good. Could, Could have been, been you. Yeah. I think it might have been you, actually. Like, boots off. So I took my boots off, put them aside. Gatorade shower afterwards. A couple of beers in the rooms after the game. Everyone was celebrating. Bus ride back. And I'd had, I had like, four beers, but I was plastered because <laughs> I hadn't had anything to eat all day. <laughs> anyway, just like... have four beers already at this stage. And it was just like... I was so... Just, like, in awe. It was an out-of-body experience for the whole game. Get back to the hotel. Like, straight back to... I think Tim Kelly had a couple of beers in his room. So straight back there. Um, and then just, yeah, riding a high, drop the next day. <laughs> but just riding the high of what was just a, a life, a childhood dream come to fruition, and then we got a win. So one and one forever. So it's a uh, very, very good feeling. And a good spot to finish the interview on, I think. Yeah. I will say, I played, I played in that game. You did. I yeah. described that as one of the best wins I've ever been involved in my whole career, that game against St Kilda. For that reason, it was... Uh, like I'd love to say because of playing with you, but it had a bit to do with it. It was like this scrimmage bullshit we had to pull up yeah. with all year. You were playing. There was a couple of other guys that had been scrimmaging with the lads all yeah. year. It was just the, it was the best feeling to like. It was that. the Kilda going yeah. well too. It was the bottom of the barrel, but like <laughs> yeah, by, sc- and hammer <laughs> by scraping the bottom of the barrel, I can't mean that any more literally than it is. Like it was. Every single fit and available body was injured, and there were, there might have been two guys watching it in the box. Hey, have that you seen fit. West Coast play this year? I oh, know that's what it was like. If COVID contingency had have been there, there would have been ten of them out there. It was just a bottom of the barrel sort of situation. Very brief answer. Are you on the Fremantle Dockers COVID contingency list? Yeah, I am. But so you're flying. are you a Freo Docker right now? God no, they're flying, mate. They they won't need any COVID players. They've done it. They've managed it very very well. Touch wood. So is, is but if finals come around, touch. <laughs> I'm ready. So <laughs> AFL, do you still? Are you still trying? Oh, I'm trying to play as good a football as I physically can. I think I wasn't up to the level. Um, if I if I needed to now, I could probably be serviceable. I think, but I'm I'm enjoying life after AFL football. I'm loving waffle. I'm loving the contest. I'm loving the different nature of that environment. I'm loving working. I'm loving, yeah, loving everything about life after footy without ever having been a really good footballer. So, if it happens, it happens. But I'm just content playing as good a football as I can. As um, as Drew Petrie said to you, um, your eagle number two five five, and no one can ever take that away from yep. you. Yep. So he did. You and I'm one game, one win. Jeez, you've seen that video. You must have watched it. <laughs> it's like, so how do you? Do? <laughs> I was there. You idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, um, no, that's yeah. That's I mean. We've seen what COVID did to the West to West Coast. So, who Could knows? To Freo. All right, all right, all right. You're a storyteller, so we're a bit over time, but that's okay. Social Sorry media, that. that's okay. Don't apologise. Don't ever apologise. Social media brought to you by Cameo Australia. Hammer, you on Cameo? No, I'm not. You won't have to get on there, mate. <laughs> no, I, I, would, would, I, I would. Mate, like, don't. Yeah, don't I, knock I've it. I've done about eight in the last month. Wow. Damn yes. Cons. <laughs> Amish Brace yeah. needs to be signed okay. up. Cameo Australia, look after us. You know what social media it is. Of course, you've been in this yeah, show I've before. Been you've been. There. I mean, it's. I mean, it's hard not to know about it. Where it's where the <laughs> the our our listeners, our audience, get to ask the guests, which the is hard you. Hitters, yep. The questions. So let's get into it. Rob underscore Dinsdale underscore. Geez, I'd love that straight off the bat, Rob. Really good. Um, I'm gonna just. Yep. How does Hammer feel about Oscar running the West Coast Pod without him? And being replaced by Thumper. That's got to be the worst part, sure. Let's keep oh, this brave, please. It's a kick in the guts, no question about it. But at the same time, you know they're putting out an inferior product. Oh, whack. You said that, not us. Gibbs, 9-5, having not made a career out... Sorry, you mentioned... Out of this. the AFL. Is there something you would have changed so that you would still be in the system? Uh, having not made a career is hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just yeah, reading just the question. Reading that's, um, no, look, I, I've I think spoken... It yeah. a long... Yeah, uh, the first year maybe do a little bit different, but I don't have many regrets, and uh, it's led me to. I work still work with West Coast, so I'm doing a bit with them, and I'm uh, I'm pretty content with what I've done. West Coast underscore Sherry, <laughs> uh, can you make sure you are at the next Eagles clinic for the kids? Heart kid Alex will be looking for you. Wants to show you how fast he can run now. 
All right, can't say that I remember Alex too much. I've had a, I do a lot of clinics in my community stuff, so Good. there's some great kids that I've met along the way. But uh, Alex is one of them. And Alex is one of them, and I'm be sure to me- actually no, I do know who Alex is. He went in for heart surgery. Yes. yes, I do know Alex. Yeah, absolutely. So he's running fast now. Yeah, well, he's out. At, oh, wow. Last time I met him, he just he was about two weeks after heart surgery. That's and unreal. Had the scars here and had everything, and he was like. I, you know, touch wood that I was hoping it didn't go the way that I thought it would. Well, it's going through. well Amazing. and he's going to absolutely I whoop will. you in a race. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah, not hard, Alex. I'm not quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lewis. Dot uh Who's your favourite uncle? Has to be Robert, surely. Yep. That man can throw a heavy ball. Yeah, no, it is Robert. He's my... Uh, so dad's got two brothers, James and Robert. And uh, Robert is the uncle that got me so heavily into... Heavily pun. Heavy metal, <laughs> as I'm wearing my Metallica shirt now. Went to a Tool concert with him, which is a, uh, a heavy metal band, and he he's a drummer in a band called Ring Peace. So the mighty Ring Peace. Uh, yeah, but he, he's my favourite uncle. Is this um, a, an uncle that can throw a heavy ball just makes me think of um, Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite yeah, throws it, it over the mountain. What's the matter? I can throw football <laughs> over those mountains. This guy is your man. I don't. Yeah, okay, I, yeah. can't, I can't. I look at you like I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, what's the matter? I can throw yeah. football over those yeah. mountains. Um, is that why you spent so much time on the pinball machine, the Metallica pinball machine? In the yeah, loved it. The ACDC one in the first half, the Metallica oh. one in the second half. Yeah, loved spent it. some time on the pinball machines, <laughs> man. Oh, have uh, Joshua Clark, double underscore. We like that. Uh, why oh. do they call you? <laughs> what am I ringing? Oh. Yeah, why do they call you the canoe? And did you poo your pants when you called Simo Adzi? Well, yes. yes. First of all, yes. You've heard me. I shit my heart out my ass <laughs> for the Adzi one. Uh, why do they call me the canoe? So this is... Uh, I'll keep it brief because we're running well over. That's fine. I um, podcast. We know what we want, but yeah, we can I, keep going forever. I played a game against Claremont in my first year at the footy club. We had... It was torrential rain forecast and I was a Victorian and the joke was Victorians just play footy in the wet all the time. I had a friend at my school, Xavier Sabotch, who always would say when the forecast was for rain, boys, they call me the canoe because I just turn it on in the wet. <laughs> and, I, and we all thought it was just hilarious. So I rolled that out thinking I'll play okay, I'm sure I will. Anyway, I've rolled out against Claremont after a week of saying, calling myself the canoe, <laughs> and had four touches. <laughs> and fo- remember finishing the game just thinking, that is the worst game of football anyone's ever played, and I couldn't have bigged myself up more. <laughs> and anyway, that stuck. The boys would call, had been calling me the canoe ever since. And the new. <clears throat> the new. Um, two to go. <clears throat> the underscore J underscore Jaden. Yep. Uh, how did you get an invite to the Brownlow, but your brother Angus didn't the year before? Oh, great story. Uh, <laughs> so Angus was uh, uh, didn't think anything of him and then all of a sudden he come third. Um, it was in his kitchen, take it. This was yeah. before like Zoom, <coughs> Zoom Brownlow. This was a real Brownlow. Yeah, this was, was a real Brownlow. He didn't get an invite. And he was at a friend's house drinking. He was abs- he was buckled by this point. But like, so he was in his cotton on shirt and he took a fo- and he was like, he come third out of nowhere. And... He got his friend's like third place under 12 swimming medallion or something <laughs> and has taken this photo saying like, cheers, cotton on for the, you know, the outfit as they all do at the red carpets. Got a cotton on sponsorship out of it. So Very great good. result for him. <laughs> Very love that. good. Love that. Very good. But the next year I was a Melbourne boy living in Perth. I'd flown home after the season and Nick had been invited. And this is before he'd met Britain, before he'd um, got a girlfriend. And he, I remember he texted me saying, Hammer, are you in Melbourne? Like, do you want to come to the Brownlow? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Get me there. Got a, got the suit. Hugo Boss, I'm rolling into this. And I'm just like, this is the, I'm just drinking crowns, having red wine. I don't even like wine. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it was like, have you ever been to a Brownlow? Yeah, one. You yeah. have to go to the toilet in the break. If you're not back, they shut you out. <laughs> and so I am just sculling red wine, sculling beers. And like sprinting to and from the toilet, coming back, sitting down, get oh, it was just the best night ever. After party afterwards, went across the road. Ha- I'm like, there's Fife there, he's just won it. There's Dangerfield, and I'm just like, I am. Oh, I haven't played a game, and no one knows who I am. But it's the best night you ever. You have lived the best bloody AFL <laughs> yeah. life, mate. One game, brown yeah. low, been there, premiership year, um, yeah. family premiership, oh, family mate, premiership, one of the greats. Delisted, re rookie, rookie. You got the your hub, game in. Very, if very you had to kick funny. the goal, then you would have done pretty much. It would have been my first. Go- I would have been in the first one goal, one kick club. Oh my! Boy. But I'm in the one goal, one point, one kick club. So Correct. A bit different. Yeah, a little bit less exclusive, but uh, still. You get that. Yeah, very good. Uh, last question, and I think this is a good one to finish on. Isaac Dowling four. 
Fremantle playing Melbourne in the grand final this year. Who are you going for? Freo, I think I have to. Wow. Melbourne have already won one. Yep. Andrew's fl- Andrew lives here, so you know we see him all the time. Go and watch Freo. <clears throat> I know a lot of their players, um, and but yeah, more so for the fact that Freo have already won. Uh, Melbourne have already won one. I think. Big, I think it's a chance. Big win from Freo on the weekend. Oh, absolutely. I didn't watch the first half because I was playing, but came off halfway through the third quarter, and they're just storming, sizzling. Yeah, that's it, mate. Fantastic. Did you have fun? <coughs> Absolutely loved it. Thank you. Uh, you're going to like this. This is uh, off to the top of my head here, but Backchat, I'll give you some socials. Backchat double underscores. Right. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on TikTok. You can find us on YouTube. If you listened and you want to watch, find us on YouTube. If you watch and you want to listen, find us where you get your podcast. If you, you want to... can't you listen? You can. You can. <coughs> you're probably not going to do both separately, though. True. You want to combine the two? Find yep. us on YouTube. <coughs> subscribe. I know Hamish is subscribed. I He'll be signed subscribe. up to Cameo. Subscribe to YouTube. <coughs> signed up to all of our socials. Yep. Fake YouTube account. You'll be sending in, you send it, we read it, to hello at backchatpodcast.com.au and you can find all of this at backchatpodcast.com.au. Thanks to our sponsors. Whippersnapper Distillery. Shelter Brewing Co. Blue Bet. Cameo Australia. Come on now, Dan. Who am I missing now? Margaret River Roasting. Margaret River, River Roasting Co. I'm the, I'm even got the look merch. At, look, uh, ma- maybe that's oh, my yeah, problem. That's whippersnapper. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, that's nice. What do you do? Do you drink whiskey, drink beer, or drink coffee? Drink beer. Okay, we'll sort drink you out. Drink coffee? I do drink coffee, yeah, absolutely. All right, how do you drink it? Uh, I drink it a ca- in an, a cappuccino form with a little <laughs> bit of chocky on yeah, top. Margaret River Roasting will make you a good one. Very good. That's right. it. Done and dusted. It's been fun. Back chat. We'll see you next week.